Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on Dynamo BIM. On this episode of Dynamo Shorts, we are going to be grouping elements based off of the room they're in and copying over the room data, in this case the room number, over to those elements. In this case, we're going to be doing furniture from the sample file, but you could do any category of elements that you would like. Lighting fixtures, casework, whatever it might be, right? All right, so to further explain exactly what we're going to do, I'm first going to create a Revit schedule, right? Let's look at the data and further understand logically what we're exactly going to do in Dynamo before we do it. So if we go over and we create a schedule of quantities, I just want to create a furniture schedule. And if you can remember from our last Dynamo Shorts episode, we actually placed a whole bunch of desks. So we're going to have some additional furniture than the standard sample file. Now you'll see that in the sample file there is already a furniture schedule. I'm going to create another one rather than editing it. It's not a problem. And in this schedule, I want to see a few things. I want to see maybe the family and type. Oh, not that. The family and type. The mark value, which as we know is the Revit number associated to that element, right? And then if I come up into the top in the fields, we can select available fields from the room rather than the category of elements that we're looking at, in this case, furniture. So I want to look at the room name and number, just so we can get a better idea of that. And we're going to hit OK. So when we look at this, you'll see it tells us what the family is and type, whether it has a mark value, which in this case a lot of them do not, and where those elements are. Now in this case, of course, we could come over and we could copy information manually, right? We could copy over the room number or whatever it is that we want to copy over, right? Uh, but we're going to use Dynamo to do that in a very smart and automated way. So I have Dynamo open here just with a blank canvas and we're going to take a look at those furniture elements just like we did in the schedule. To select elements within Revit, what we're going to do is come to the Revit category within Dynamo under selection and you can see that there's a bunch of different ways that we can select elements within Revit. We want to get categories and all elements of the category and essentially what this will do will replicate what we have within our furniture schedule, right? So we want to grab furniture and I'm going to grab this as a drop down because it could work with any category of elements that we want to renumber in this way or group by room. And you can see here, because it's on automatic, it grabs all 123 furniture elements from the sample file. Once again, I think we have 19 extra desks from those instruction rooms that we placed in our last episode. So at this point, what we need to do is ask these family instances, which are what we placed in the last episode, what room they are in. So under Revit elements, we're going to come down to family instance. And you can see this is what we use by point and level to place those desks. But now we want to ask those elements what room they're in. So we're going to bring the output of our elements to the input of family instance. And you can see it gets 123 rooms. Now at this point, what we want to do is we want to group them by the room. Now this actually allows you to get a little bit more advanced than a Revit natively, because what I'm doing is I'm grouping them by the room itself, rather than by the room number or the room name, which we would have to be kind of forced to do within Revit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do right click on my canvas here and do group and this is the second one group by key and the elements are the list that we want to group and the keys would be our room elements 
which once again, you can see here that our output as an element ID. We go over this in a lot of our Dynamo short episodes, but essentially every element in Revit is reported based off of an ID. This is how every element is tracked individually. So you can see here that Dynamo outputs that element as its ID, allowing you to track it individually. So you can see here that we have our groups as well as our unique keys. So our groups would actually be those elements that are grouped by the unique keys. In this case, our room elements. So if we right click and look for a watch node, we can look, for the, look at those each individually, right? We have 123 elements within what are referred to as different levels within Dynamo. You can see level three, level two, and level one. This is what's referred to as kind of a list within a list. So you can see I have list zero, because in coding, really, it always starts at zero rather than one, one, so forth. And within these lists, we have the elements that are represented by that individual room. Okay, so you can see here that I have list zero with a list of zero through 75, because or 74, because once again, it starts at zero. So 75 furniture elements that have been grouped together. Because if we look at our cafeteria here, you can see there's 75 furniture elements. So I'm going to come over and look at element under element and get parameter value by name. I want to ask my unique keys, double click on my canvas here to get a code block and look for number. And we can see here that it reports the number of those unique keys. In this case, the room number. At this point, what we need to do is we need to create a number based off of how many elements live in each one of these groups. If I come into my schedule and I give my furniture the mark value of 121 two times, it's going to give me a warning, right? That it has duplicate mark values. So I essentially need to give these elements unique mark values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to append a suffix on here of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on, so that each one, once again, has a unique number or mark value. So to do this, I am going to count how many elements I find which within each one of these groups. So count essentially how many elements that I have at level two. List count. You can see if I count the first one, it's going to tell me I have 21. And the reason that is, is because I have 21 unique groups, right? Remember we start at zero and we go to 20. Therefore we have 21. I don't want to count how many groups I have. I want to count, I want to count how many elements I have within each one of those groups. In this case, how many furniture elements I have within each room. So this arrow right next to the input of list, I'm going to click that and I'm going to tell it to use levels. And when I do that, you can see that it says, there we go. I have 75 furniture elements in that first group, right? Within our cafeteria, we have 75 furniture elements, right? Starting at zero. In that second group, we have 29. Let's make sure that's correct. There we go. So from this, I can say I want to append a number based off of how many I have. And to do this, I'm going to create a range, which once again, we did when we renumbered the elements based off of their level. 
So I'm going to right click and look for range. We're going to start at one. So double clicking and just typing in one ending at our count, which is the number that we have per group and stepping at one. So it will go one, two, three, etc. for as many elements as we have in each group. So you can see here that I get one through 75 in that first group, one through 29 in that second group, etc. So now that I've created this range, I want to concatenate these two values together, the room number and this suffix, just like we demonstrated within this schedule, right? But I want to add a separator of this decimal, right? Otherwise, it would be 1,211, right? And that would be a completely different number. To do this, I'm actually going to use an advanced code block, which, once again, we talked about with advanced code blocks back when we talked about data types and strings, etc. So I'm going to double click and get a code block here, and I'm going to add x plus y. But in between x and y, right, if I just add x my room number and y that range that I created you can see it gives me a thousand right I don't want that so I actually want to add a decimal in there as well to separate those values and then you can see that I get 121.1.2 and so forth and within that I get the different numbers per group Awesome. So now we have created our concatenation, the range of numbers that we need. Now we can go ahead and push this number to our mark value. So we're going to come back to our elements. So Revit, elements, element. And we are going to set parameter by name. This would be our value our elements being our groups and our parameter name being our mark, right? So I'm just going to double click, type in mark with a capital M in quotations there, push that over and you can see all 123 elements have been updated. If I look at my Revit schedule, you can see that numbering system followed right down along, all the way down to 75. Now, to look at how many elements were updated, we can look at, once again, a count, right? So the list.count. But to get this as a single number, what we actually want to do is flatten this value first. And essentially, by flattening these values, what I get is rather than a list of lists, I get one single list. I have now removed that list structure that Dynamo has produced. Then I can push this flattened list over to my list.count and at this point, I do not need levels. And you can see it gives me the total count of elements that I have from Revit that have been updated. Let me know down in the comments below how you plan on renumbering your elements within your Revit model. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to get notifications on future episodes.